Hey, this is JC and welcome to Small Brick City. I'll be showing you an update to my beach and how I'm blending the beachfront and water with the Ninjago City and Ninjago City docks. I'll be sharing how I mode the water landscape around these two sets and I'll also show you my modifications and expansions to the Ninjago City docks, specifically the Market Pier area. Let's start off with the beach first. Since my last beach update, I've done some significant changes to the water as well as the beachfront itself. One of the major differences is the treatment of the water. It's a work in progress, but as you can see, I've recarved my beach and I've tiled the water with trans blue tiles. The coastline itself has changed slightly and I've worked out a logical landscape for the beach. One of the issues that I had with the layout is the difference in how the water is created for the Ninjago City sets and my beach coastline. And since they are directly opposite each other, it doesn't make sense to have two vastly different styles of water in the same location. The look of the water at the beachfront is like waves crashing onto the shoreline. While the water for the Ninjago City sets is basically still water, I had to reconcile the differences so it makes sense to exist in the same display. For weeks I was trying to figure out a solution and this is what I came up with. Here's a closer look at the shoreline where the water hits the beach. You can see there's a gradient of white, light blue and medium blue plates covered with transparent plates as well as trans blue tiles. The resulting texture is very rich and also creates a sense of movement for the water. This water treatment goes all the way up to my beach until about two thirds in where you see the yacht from the Cruising Adventures set 31083 docked. The momentum of the water there has kind of slowed down and therefore the texture for that part of the beach will not have such heavy crashing waves. The way I see the stretch of beach is like a cove or small inlet from the sea. To keep the look of the still water for the Ninjago City docks, I created a brick water which essentially stops the water from crashing down hard into the docks area. I chose the placement of the brick water because there's also a natural barrier in the design of the Ninjago City set. So this was a perfect position and allows me to preserve the look of the water for the Ninjago City docks behind it. However, I did change all the water treatment for the Ninjago City at the corner. I basically removed all the trans blue tiles and tiles underneath it and replicated the look of the water that is crashing against the beach on the opposite side. While some people think that I've done the unthinkable by removing tiles from the original set, I think it was necessary in order to blend the Ninjago City with my beachfront. You might have noticed the circular concentric pattern of water in the front of the display. That is for the scene where an ochre or small whale will breach the surface of the water jumping into view. Here's a look at the front corner of the Ninjago City set and how I've replaced the water tiles to replicate the crashing water effect. Now let's have a look behind the Ninjago City sets and I'll share with you my plans on how I'm going to lay out the water geography. I am retaining the still water effect for the back of the Ninjago City sets, both the city and the city docks. And in order to do this logically, I've built another brick water which will protect the waves from crashing into the back of the city and the city docks. But I've only made it partial and that's because I do want to have the waves crashing into a small mountain where I've placed my modified lighthouse point set and that's set 31051. Originally, I had rock features lining the entire left side of this water display. I've decided to remove them to give the feel of an open sea that continues to the left of the display. This also helps with the visual effect for the lighthouse point so that it appears isolated on a mountain looking out into the open sea. With this design of the breakwater, I can logically lay out the water landscape so that I can retain the still water look for the back of the Ninjago sets. At the same time, still have a crashing water effect against the base of the mountain of the lighthouse point. So I get to cheat and get the best of both worlds. All the naked blue plates that you see over here will be covered with the trans blue tiles and I'll add some texture underneath as well. Now let's have a look at the modifications and the expansion I've done to the market pier for the Ninjago City docks. I've done a previous video for the Ninjago City docks and also showed how it looks like placed with the Ninjago City set. I did not do any major modifications to the front but I did change the back a bit. The first thing I did was to extend the height of that little crane or pulley which is used to place goods onto ships. As the ship I use in the display is Destiny's Bounty, I needed to make it higher so that it can accommodate the height of that ship. 
The other thing I did was to extend the pier where the marketplace is. I basically extended it over the water to the wooden jetty. I built this extension because I felt there wasn't enough dry ground for this set. There are enough water elements to show that this is a set built on water, but there's not enough room for you to pose minifigs, small builds or scenes. So if you wanted to build static scenes or even areas for you to battle minifigs with, there isn't really much space except the built up areas and the staircases. One reason I wanted to extend this pier was to put my noodle food cellar into the set. Before this, I tried to put my small build into different areas but there was just no real practical space to place it. If I placed it on the wooden jetty, that doesn't make sense. And if I were to place it on one of the walkways, it basically would take up the entire width of the space and there'll be no space for any minifix to pass through. The extension of the pier gives me ample space to put my noodle cellar and still allows me to put other minifigs and if I wanted, to interact with the built-in stores of the set. To build the extension, I first pulled out all the bricks of the wooden jetty. This allowed me to take out the water tiles behind it and then place bricks for the foundation of the extension. And then I covered the area with tiles, including those 3x4 minifig stand tiles with 4 studs in the middle. This created the entire surface for the extension. After building the extension, I replaced the wooden jetty so everything was back in place. I did leave this part of the water uncovered as I felt it was a nice design feature. One additional thing that I did add was safety chains and barriers on either side of the extension. These are made of round bricks, chain parts and round tiles. It's a nice little safety feature but also visually defines the area. And I did it for both sides. If you're looking to maximize ground space for the Ninjago City docks, I think this extension is worthy of your consideration. It is pretty simple to do, all you need are extra bricks and tiles. But once you have this extra space, there are many more scenes and minifigs that you can stage. I hope you enjoyed this work in progress update for my beach to blend the water seamlessly with the Ninjago City and Ninjago City docks. Let me know what you think in the comments, do you like the way the water is created? Do you like the idea of a breakwater to give a logical reason for the difference in the looks for the water for the city docks and the rest of the beach? I also hope you like the modifications to the Ninjago City docks and the Market Pier extension. Let me know if this is a modification you would do for your own set. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. In my next couple of videos, I'll be sharing even more original small build tutorials so be sure to turn on the notifications after you have subscribed. Before you go, check out these two videos that you might have missed. Talk to you soon!